Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to get started, and I really appreciate those who came out. I know the weather's pretty nasty out there this afternoon, so thanks for coming. My name is Kristen Locker, and this is the Accolade Speeds Healthcare Answers to Customers with Amazon Connect session. I am a director of IT infrastructure at Accolade, and this is my first reInvent, my first time here in Vegas, so it's been a super exciting week already. But I'm even more excited to talk to you about how Accolade implemented Amazon Connect. I'm not going to be doing that talking alone. I've got Saeed Hassan, our Amazon Connect Solutions architect that worked very closely with our team, and Stephen Murphy, our Senior Director of Cloud Engineering at Accolade. So you'll hear from all three of us. All right, guys. So what we're going to cover in the hour that we have with you today is basically explain what Accolade does as a company um, and what our journey was to get to this point where we're talking to you today about implementing Amazon Connect. Give you a brief overview of our architecture and get under the covers um, a little more, more in detail since this is a 300 level session. We want to give you some of the engineering nitty gritty um, and share with you what we thought our keys to success of our implementation were and where we're going next with the Amazon Connect product at Accolade and hopefully have plenty of time for any questions that you guys have for us. So let's talk about Accolade. Um, while hopefully someday soon Accolade is a household name, I'm pretty sure that there's some folks here who don't know what we are or what we do. So let me try to explain that for you. Our customers purchase Accolade's products and services and then provide them to their employees and the dependents of those employees as a benefit. Um, we then serve as the single point of entry for those employees and their dependents to navigating those benefits in the healthcare system. We like to call these employees and those dependents that we serve our members. So for any healthcare related questions or benefits questions that those members have, they call Accolade. Typically our phone number goes on the back of their health plan ID card. And when they call that, they're calling Accolade and they're landing in our Amazon Connect instance. Our goal is really to cut through the complexity of the healthcare system and help our members get the right care at the right place at the right time, ultimately reducing their costs as well as the costs of their employers who are our customers. Just kind of some overview facts about Accolade. We were founded over 12 years ago. We have over 1,000 employees and we serve over 1.5 million members. We are co-headquartered in Plymouth Meeting, Pennsylvania, which is west of Philadelphia, and Seattle, Washington. But we also have offices in Santa Monica, Scottsdale, Atlanta, and Prague, where we have a sizable and talented pool of technologists, developers, and engineers who partner directly with our US-based tech teams. We have a leadership team that joined us over four years ago, Raj Singh, Mike Hilton, and Harish Nadu, who are really instrumental in setting a technology vision for our company that allowed us to even pursue a cloud-based contact center product. And you can see on the right some of the logos of the customers that we serve, and they span industries, but also notably, they're very different in size. We have customers with as few as 100 members, but also customers with upwards of 100,000 members. So to further try to explain what Accolade does for its members. We're gonna talk about this in the context of a specific individual we call Joe. Unfortunately for Joe, his employer did not buy Accolade and does not provide it as a benefit to him. So when he has a healthcare issue or a benefit-related question, maybe related to his insomnia or his high blood pressure, he's basically on his own. Doing all the legwork himself, trying to figure out who to call, maybe getting the runaround, potentially wasting money, wasting time, um, by making inefficient use of his health care benefits and maybe going to the wrong type of care facility for whatever his need is at that point. But if Joe's employer had provided accolade to him as a benefit, Joe would have personalized advocacy available to him to support him when he has those health care needs and benefits questions. Our accolade health assistants, who are effectively the agents using our Amazon Connect contact center, serve as Joe's entry point to our services. And they are available to him not just through that contact center, but also through our mobile app um, and our website. 
So those healthcare assistants hopefully are able to really support Joe and answer his question or give him the guidance that he needs at that moment. But sometimes they can't. And sometimes what they'll do is they'll make Joe aware of other third-party benefits that his employer provides, like telemedicine. That's really the right answer for him at that moment. But if neither the healthcare assistant or a third-party benefit are really what Joe needs, we have a wealth of resources that our health assistants will connect Joe with in our company. Nurses, clinical case managers, pharmacists, social workers. We have a whole team of skilled people that can answer whatever that is, that need is that Joe has at that time. Now, sometimes the questions we get aren't overly complicated. It can be, hey, I lost my ID card. I'm going to the doctor next week. I need a new one. What do I do? Um, but it can get a little more complex. Joe might open up a bill and be like, holy cow, I went to the doctor for what I thought was a pretty basic procedure. No idea I was going to have to pay this much money. Is this right? Like, is this really what I owe him? We'll help him figure that out. Maybe Joe's moved. He's managed to find himself a new doctor, but he has some kids, and he hasn't been able to find a pediatrician that's in network. We can do that provider search for him and get him somebody who's in his network and is taking new patients. Or maybe Joe's son just got diagnosed with asthma, and Joe's kind of freaking out a little bit because the doctor explained how they were going to treat it, but some of it kind of went over his head, and he needs some help kind of assimilating that information and figuring out how to support his son through this diagnosis. Ultimately, Accolade's goal is to reduce the complexity of this whole process for Joe. So now that we've kind of set the stage for what Accolade does, let's talk about how we got to be here today talking to you about Amazon Connect. We took our first live call from a member in 2009. And at that time, we were using one of the standard on-prem products of the day with about 24 physical phones and one server. At that time, technology innovation wasn't really what we were focused on. We were focused on proving out our business model and signing up new customers. So we kind of plotted along with this product, added new features as we could, when we needed to, but we really weren't trying to do anything revolutionary with that product. Fast forward to 2014, and our projected headcount growth put us at a point where we needed to buy more licenses for that product. So we go to the vendor who, of course, is more than willing to sell us new licenses, but they said, ah, we can't sell them to you on that current product. You have to upgrade. So if you're going to make us go through that work of upgrading, you know what? Let's take a step back. Maybe we need to look at something else. And it was at that time in Accolade's history that our leadership was saying, you know what? We want to move to the cloud. So hey, if we're going to embark on potentially selecting a new contact center product, let's look for one that's cloud-based. A whole RFP later, we picked a vendor who indicated to us they had a cloud-first product, signed a three-year contract, and off we went. But in the first 60 days, it was pretty clear that we were going to have some problems implementing this product. We had a lot of high-level executive meetings between Accolade and the vendor to really try to get this product or this project back on track, which we kept it moving along, but we had a launch that was delayed by nine months. So we kind of knew at that moment that this product was not really going to be our long-term platform for contact center services. Um, we got to the point where we were actually considering bringing a PBX in-house, which seemed really old school, but we said, you know, at least we control it. It's in our own kind of hands to control our destiny. But March of that year, as we're basically getting ready to brief our executives on this new approach that we had come up with, Amazon announces the launch of Amazon Connect. This is the slide that really got us in the initial launch deck because it really kind of made us feel like it was hitting all the marks that we wanted. Um, we'd already moved our infrastructure to AWS, and the idea of having telephony natively embedded was clearly something we felt the need to dig into a little bit more. Steven jumped right in. I don't know where Steven went. Um, spun up an instance, and within 10 minutes, he's like making calls, taking calls, and he's all in. He's ready to go. Um, the framework with the, that Amazon was offering was really aligned to our needs. So kind of we were looking at, at it as a contact center disruptor that warranted more effort on our part to evaluate whether it could really meet our needs. So being diligent technicians, 
we embarked on a formal gap analysis. And at that time, we identified 20 gaps in the product. Now, they weren't all critical gaps, but they were things that the product didn't do that we needed. Direct agent dialing, cold transfers. Um, but by the time we got to the point where we were ready to launch, all but two of those gaps had been resolved, either through Connect enhancing the product or through the Accolade team working with Saeed and the resources he could link us up with to build workarounds to those gaps. The two gaps that, never, that didn't get resolved by that point were the ability to coach an agent on a call and the ability to barge in. And they're decent features that our business really wanted to have. But with everything else that we could explain that we were going to get with Amazon Connect, they were willing to wait on those. And they were willing to continue to move that initiative forward, knowing that they'd have to do some workarounds for those particular features while we waited for Amazon. And we're still waiting and fully expect that someday those are going to be in the product. Um, we got the OK from the business to move forward. We then embarked on a 30-day proof of concept to really just make sure that we knew what it was going to take to set up queues, build contact flows, and actually see calls routing into those queues. Um, obviously, since we're standing here today, that was determined to be a success. But we had a three-year contract on an existing product that we needed to run out. So we kind of set aside the active work to implement Connect while we really focused on addressing some of our internal communication needs related to our Accolade cloud platform and the implementation of the FIRE model. We'll talk about that in a couple slides down, um, until we were ready to start actively implementing Connect. One of the things that made it super, or I shouldn't say super easy, easier to sell this brand new product to our leadership was this. <laughs> you really can't argue with hard numbers like this in a 40% um, savings on per member per month cost of service, 80% savings in annualized agent cost, 50% savings in long distance and telco charges. I mean, people love to see a slide like this. And the finance team, more so than anyone else, they, we were best friends after giving them some of this information. So finally, months ticked by on that contract. We were trying to run out. And we got to the point in December of 2018 where we were ready to start actively moving forward on our Connect implementation. And while we certainly needed to do the work to build out contact flows and a custom soft phone. Equally, if not more important for us, was making sure that all of that phone call data really flowed through all of our downstream systems in the way that we needed it to. So we took a very straightforward approach to kind of chunking up each of these types of communications that were going to be flowing through our Connect instance and making sure that not only did Connect handle that phone call the way we expected, but that the data associated with that phone call really was verified to meet all of our downstream needs. So we started with the most basic scenario, an outbound call, moved on to inbound queue calls, inbound direct dials, what we call an enhanced, but it's really an internal transfer or cold, cold or warm transfer, surveys, voicemails, and then callbacks. So between December and April of this year, we got to the point where we were ready to deploy this product to our first line of business. A small line of business, but a line of business dealing with production customers nonetheless. Um, and over the period of April through July, we got this deployed to our entire contact center. And really, there were a couple small waves, and we did one pretty significant big bang on July 22nd to over 400 of our agents. That worked. We're still here. Nobody lost a job. What really surprised us um, in a very positive way was our ability to implement this with a small, well, we like to think of ourselves as a mighty team of just internal resources. We did not need to purchase professional services to be able to get to that point. We did certainly leverage Saeed and the resources he could hook us up with in Amazon Connect to get to that point, but it was our team that did it. Stephen, ran our executive interference and became a squeaky, kneel, squeaky wheel if we ever needed it, um, and also facilitated integration across our internal product and tech teams. I liaisoned with our business and really focused on requirements definition, but also made thousands of phone, my little finger got tired, made thousands of phone calls before we got to the point where we were automating that. 
We had two lead engineers. One was actually supposed to be on stage today. His name is Mike from our US office. Um, his wife delivered twins early, so he's <laughs> appropriately so home with his new family. Um, Jakob, our lead engineer from Prague, is here today. We also had three other engineers from our Prague office. One is Andrew, who's also here in our audience. And never, none of them had prior telephony system experience. But that didn't matter. Day one, they're building lambdas, they're extending Lily, they're creating a custom soft phone. No big deal. Just got to work and got it done. We had one additional resource, Stan, who was really our provisioning resource and also handled the rest board of our phone numbers from our prior vendor to connect, which is not an insignificant effort. So that's our journey. And now we're at the point where we have Connect up and running for our business. So let's talk about the Accolade architecture and how Connect fits into that. This is the Accolade cloud platform. That's just what we call our unique collection of cloud-based applications and microservices. So it's that portfolio of services that we need to serve our agents, to serve our mem members, to serve our customers. Since we're talking about engagement data with our members, and more specifically, telephony data, our focus today is on our communications pipeline and how we've integrated Amazon Connect into this Accolade cloud platform. This is our Accolade communications pipeline, and it really enables us to support various communications mediums, so not just telephony, but messaging and email through a common interface, allowing that data to be consumed by our other applications and services within the platform. This interface is based on what's called the FIRE model, because we're dealing with healthcare-related data. I'm not sure people are familiar with that particular model. It's fast healthcare interoperability resources. So more than a mouthful, we just call it the FIRE model. Um, for interchanging electronic healthcare records. The real-time event-based data feed flowing through that pipeline is what allows us to handle the pretty common use cases for a contact center, like auto-opening a CRM record for the caller as it's routing to the agent based upon an anti-match or data that that caller has entered into our IVR, and then allowing that phone call to be attached to that member record with the ability for the agent to add metadata to that phone call, like who specifically did you talk to, and then being able to listen to that call recording then or at any later point. And lastly, surfacing voicemails that have been left for the agents by our members, associating those voicemails to that member record, and then listening to them at any point down the road. So to get even more under the covers with what we did with Connect, I'm gonna bring up Saeed. And he's going to take us the rest of the way until we transition to Stephen. Thank you so much, Christian. So one of, one of the things that I think went really well was AWS resources, Amazon Connect Solutions Architects, our account team was involved from the get-go. We were able to understand what the strategic vision is, who the accolade and customers are, what's the industry requirements, what about all the electronic health records, interoperability with other... Uh, partners in the same space. So that really helped us on the AWS side get grounded and get in sync with the Accolades team. So we now share the same vision. So as Kristen mentioned, the first thing we did was identified what the use cases are, which one of them can we solve natively in Amazon Connect. So majority of them we were able to solve with, within Amazon Connect. However, uh, we identified 20 gaps. And that's where we started broadening the, the scope of services within the AWS cloud. So now with Amazon Connect, it's just one service, but the, a lot of advantage comes from also leveraging the other broader AWS cloud services. So using those services, we were able to solve for majority of those gaps by leveraging those additional services. That gave us two advantages. One of them, we were able to solve for those gaps. The other thing, Amazon Connect being a very open and extensible platform, and making use of those additional services, especially like Lambda, uh, the serverless microservices platform that AWS has, step functions for workflow orchestration, uh, Kinesis data streams for streaming the data and making sure that it's not just siloed data within uh, Amazon Connect platform, but it's all part of the bigger data picture of Accolade. 
that really helped Accolade um, and us come up with a solution that was more comprehensive and able to solve for Accolade business needs. So I'll talk very high level about some of the uh, features that we solved for um, within that small period of time. So when we started off, I think we had the perfect recipe for success. We had a short time to implement. We had a very small team, and we have AWS Cloud. So that was the perfect recipe for innovation and success. So things we, we did as part of the implementation was making sure that the greetings and the interaction with every customer is very personalized and is, is tapping into the rich data that CA is held in CRM, and we're making use of that rich data within the IVR application to make it much more personalizable for that particular individual. So every customer of Accolade who's calling Accolade, he's gonna get that more personalized feeling that this is exactly how they, they get me. So they know what my problems are, they know existing issues I may ha be having, and I can just pick up directly from there. So that frictionless experience is a very value additive process for that customer. There were dynamic prompts and menus that was making use of other services in AWS like DynamoDB, a key value pair, serverless, and holding that configuration over there. And in real time, doing those lookups and bringing that configuration and having it all dynamic in nature within the IVR uh, made a very personalizable IVR. The agent direct dial routing, that was something that was initially identified as Gap, but later on, it, Amazon Connect natively started offering that. But in addition to that, we also went a step ahead where we implemented a functionality, so you know, sometimes we call uh, poking someone. So if there's a direct call coming to an individual and he may be working on some back office stuff and he's not ACD available to take that phone call, uh, we do still want to notify that individual agent that, hey, there's an important call waiting for you. I know you're working on a back office case right now, but uh, do, you, do you want to handle it right now? So that poking ability, making use of API, API gateway web sockets, that was something that was uh, done as part of that functionality. Uh, cold transfers were where a lot of the calls were coming in. Amazon Connect natively provides a warm transfer functionality, uh, but in many cases, uh, Accolade agents just wanted to do a cold transfer. So we customized the soft phone using the Streams API, which is open source on GitHub, and we were able to solve for that using the cold transfers. Voicemail was another gap uh, that initially we identified as a, as a big gap, and later on when Kinesis video stream came, uh, the integration with KVS uh, from Amazon Connect, we were able to stream that audio in real time and capture that audio uh, and be able to come up with a voicemail wave file and notify the agents that there's a voicemail waiting for them. Uh, surveys were similarly added. At the end of the phone calls, the callers were directed to a post-call survey where they were able to answer those questions about CSATs and customer effort score, and you can also get net promoter score directly from those surveys and make it part of your comprehensive reporting as part of the platform. Uh, scheduled callbacks was definitely one of my favorites. Uh, Amazon Connect does provide uh, callback functionality. So if you're waiting in a queue, you don't ex actually have to wait in the queue for a long time where uh, you're listening to the hold music for 15 minutes. So it natively provides the ability where the callers can just opt in to receive a callback when their time comes in the queue. So they can hang up and as soon as their time comes uh, in the queue, the position in the queue comes for the agents, uh, they'll just get a call back. But we went a step ahead over here. In scheduled callbacks, now the callers, they can also specify a date and time of their choosing when they are available to have that call back. So then we'll have accurate resources aligned and they'll be reserved and then a call back would be done. And it's all done through natural language understanding and Lex bots where uh, customers are just saying that, hey, I want to get a call back tomorrow at 3 p.m. And that's, that's when we're confirming the callback number and then next day, they're just getting a call back. We also started with configuration management. Uh, so a single place where you can configure uh, not just Amazon Connect for those users, but also the other, other CRM and applications that are used by users, making use of Amazon Connect APIs. It was possible to have a centralized configuration management. Automated UI testing, to enhance and, and improve the period for shipping new features within Amazon Connect, 
uh, implementation and making the whole process more agile, that was also done. Uh, Accolade Softmoon, you'll not be able to recognize it because it's all completely custom built for Accolade's own personal use within this CRM application and it's being done using customizing the Softphone through the Streams API. Uh, sentiment analysis, um, how many of you uh, heard about the announcement about contact lens? All right, everyone has heard it. It's, it's a big news. So this is what, what was done before contact lens became available, generally available. So now in, in part of sentiment analysis, every call that was getting uh, stored in S3, it was triggering an event and then making use of API calls from Transcribe and Comprehend, we were able to get the sentiment of those phone calls and were able to make it part of the reporting structure within the contact center platform. So that was a precursor for uh, contact lens and that's why we, with contact lens, we gave Accolade the opportunity to see it, like, hey, this is what we are building as part of it. Uh, it's gonna be natively available in the product as well down the road. Uh, monitoring alerting using services like CloudWash to have a comprehensive dashboard. It gives you operational insight into what's going on in your contact center and also be able to send notification and alerts for your supervisors for, to ensure operational excellence. That was part of it. And last but not the least, WFM integration. Um, Accolade was making use of Verint as, uh, for workforce management. Uh, they wanted to use the same variant application, so all the historical data and every agent configuration is already in that place, and we were just able to make Amazon Connect integrate directly with that existing on-prem application, and that's how uh, we were able to solve for that workforce management. So what I'm gonna show you next is a typical call that comes into the contact center, and uh, it's going to give you a gist or a high level understanding of what uh, data tapes and API calls are being made as part of it. And then uh, I'll let Steve give you guys uh, a peek under the hood how these functionalities were actually built uh, by using Amazon Connect and other services of the AWS cloud. Your one call for all health-related issues and benefits questions. Para Español o Primado. You can now more efficiently connect with an Accolade Health Assistant through the Accolade mobile app. Press pound to receive a text message with a link to the mobile app. Accolade does not practice medicine or provide patient care. If you have a medical emergency, dial 911 immediately. Benefit coverage and payment are subject to your health plan's policy at the time medical services are received. Calls are recorded for quality purposes. If you're calling from a provider's office, press 3. If you know your health assistance extension, you may dial it now. Otherwise, stay on the line. Please hold while I try your health assistant. <clears throat> Thank you for calling Accolade. This is Kristen speaking. How can I help you today? Hi, Chris. This is Stephen Murphy. I was hoping you could help me with the provider search. Sure, definitely can help you with that. Um, before we get started, I need to find your record. Can you tell me, is it Stephen with a PH or a V? A PH. Okay. All right, I've got you. And to protect your privacy, I just need to confirm a few pieces of data. Can you tell me your address, your date of birth, and the last four of your social? Sure. Let me get you that data. Hi, yes. Stephen. It's been great talking to you today. Um, hopefully, we got you the information you needed. Don't hesitate to call us back if you have any other questions. And uh, if when you hang up, you'll be sent to our customer satisfaction survey. Have a great day. Thank you again for calling Accolade. If you would like to take the Accolade survey, press 1. To speak with a health assistant, press 2. Based on your recent interaction with Accolade, how satisfied are you with the service you received? Press 1 for very... We'd love to hear your comments about your experience with Accolade. All right, so you heard the call. Uh, one thing you might have noted, there was a lot of HIPAA data that was being exchanged. So the HIPAA compliance of, of Amazon Connect really helped in there because the platform is already HIPAA compliant. 
the other, other key takeaway for me during this project was uh, that, that persona of accolade uh, software engineers and solutions architect, that builder mentality of just rolling up their sleeves and being able to go and dive deep in and solving those problems uh, where I can just act as a consultant and I can provide some samples and guidance, but they had that mindset of actually going and solving that problem. So I think that was the, the most, most, uh, most successful persona to be successful in AWS in general, that builder mentality of being able to just solve for things. So from here onward, I'll uh, hand it over to Steve, who will give you guys a sneak peek under the hood how these functionalities and use cases were actually built. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Saeed. So those were two great speakers, and now I get to do the technical deep dive that Mike Lee should have done. So I hope I can do him justice, and we'll see how this goes. So I have a quick question, though. How many people in the crowd are engineers and that, and that have gone under the hood in Amazon Connect? Okay, so I just want to make sure I, you know, I get the right content for you. We got a lot of very deep content, and Mike, who is supposed to be here, is a super nerd. I'm just super cool. So. There's a big difference that I have to fill there. So we'll see what we can do, and we'll get through this. OK, let me see if I can get this working. OK, so now that you listen to the call, which demonstrates uh, callers' experience when they call Accolade, you know, and so once, the, once you heard that now, we're just going to go under the hood and talk about some of the things that happens. Accolade serves many different customers or lines of business, and each of those has its own distinct set of requirements for caller experience. In the sample call you heard, by the time you heard, thank you for calling Accolade, our contact flows had kicked off, and then a whole lot of stuff in the background. You know, we invoke Lambdas, which let us determine, you know, who is this caller? Do we know who he is? What line of business do they belong to? You know, and then we also notify our communications pipeline, which is integral to our other services, that, hey, we have a new call. Let's, let's rally up our services to handle this call, you know. And then, you know, we also set the default working queue based on what we know about the, the Annie or the DNS match, you know, and so, so it kind of sets the context for the entire call. So as you listen to the call, you heard, thank you for calling Accolade, and then you heard some other disclaimer prompts, which are customizable based on who the line of business is, and we allow our customers to fully control what the experience is before they get to the agent. And a lot of customers use that to use, hey, we want to announce you know, promotional things. Like for here, you heard some of our customers offer Spanish. So you heard press two for Spanish. You know, if, if a caller did that, everything from that point forth would be dynamically set in Spanish. And, our, you know, and, so that's saying, and then you heard a few more disclaimers that says, you know, it ended with you know, all calls are recorded. And once that's done, they are then into the dynamic IVR system. Uh, to, achieve, to make this all happen, I'm trying to look at which, which slide to look at because there's so many. The get menu Lambda performs all that function. It runs very fast. And you know, I think you know, by the time, thank you for calling Accolade has happened, we fired off six or seven Lambdas that, were, that set the entire contact, set contact attributes that can persist through the life of the call. And you know, it's, it's a one-time call, and, and we have everything we need to continue that call and then interact with the users as they want to interact with our system. So here's a simplified view of one of our contact flows, you know, and kind of like, obviously, if we were put the, you know, you guys worked on Amazon, if I put the whole flow up there, I'd need 50 screens, you know? But this is a, a simplified view of, and help, help set the context and pull back the covers here. So obviously, the first thing that happens is we have a, the get menu lambda that figures out who the customer is, where they belong, what audio we should play, and then it puts them, after the disclaimers are done, they come into the dynamic IVR menu, which is pretty much the, the part where you say, hey, when you heard, if you're calling for provider's office, press three. If you, ent if you know your agent's extension, enter it now. They're now in the menu system. That prompt is playing, and then we, you know, the menu select lander kicks off. We store their customer I input, and, we, and that action is to figure out, okay, what should we do with this call? What next step should happen? Where should this call go? Should it go to a queue, an agent transfer, or do we do some other, you know? We allow people like, hey, this caller's blocked, many different things. It pretty much lets us really set anything we want with that menu system. Um, one of the, the, the main things we do on the, on the, on the response of the, of the Lambda system, sorry, is that you know, we just build a whole array of ARNs, 
to be used for prompts because anybody who's Amazon Connect, they're heavy on ARNs and playing it back that, and so we have it and we, you know, proliferate our contact with the contact attributes. So for, for later on the steps, they might, at some point they might want to leave a voicemail. We already have the ARN load for that. They want to call back. We've got that loaded so we don't have to continually tax the system as we go forward. Um, one of the things of the Diamond Manual is, is obviously building the response object that we want to do once, once they, we figured out what their menu options are. So to kind of look at, you know, how are our dynamic menus structured, here's an example of a menu structure in our system, right, a representative example. Um, obviously, the first thing you see is the underscore ID, which pretty much defines the IVR menu selection. And then it also returns, hey, for this caller, for this comp customer, play this prompt. And that's what you heard, press three, engine extension. You know, we have some often say, you know, we obviously zero through nine, you can go, some customers use all the prompts, some only use three, and then we have nested menus that allow that too. So that's the, that sets by referencing that by name. It also, early in the call, if they pick Spanish, we use the name in addition to their current language preference to say, bring back the localized version of that prompt and play it in Spanish versus play it in English. So it's all dynamically happening in the background. The next item on here is you see the uh, items, which are kind of like menu, you can consider those as, as menu select options, right? In this example, we have two options. We have number two. So if the caller entered number two, we now know what action the contact flow should take after that. Or if they did nothing, but as you see by the word default equals true, it means take this action. And obviously, if that was selected, the target transfer name is Q transfer, set in for the Q, and here's a name for the Q to go with. And we allow this configurable by customer coming down. The second option, is what, you know, really using the sample call, as you see, you know, if a four or five value digit was entered, we know that that means someone is requesting a direct dial to an agent, because we either have a four or five digit extension for our agents, and the action to take is agent transfer. All right. Um, go next one here. So, obviously, once we have the information, we take the information from the caller, we know what we want to do with it, how we want to react to it, now it's about building the Lambda response, right? So here's also a simplified version of what the response looks like. And so obviously, the first thing is, hey, this is gonna be an agent transfer. So get ready to go to that direction. Tell me who the transfer is to be, because obviously in Amazon Connect, agents are by agent username, no other, there's no concept of extensions, that kind of stuff. And then obviously, you know, obviously transfer target name is the most critical part for doing a direct agent transfer. Okay, so to recap where we came, in our example, the caller listened to the menu, entered their health assist extension, and the result action was set to agent transfer, and then the contact was then sent to the agent transfer flows. All right, so now we're into the direct dial routing and check-in bubble. So at this point, the call has been routed to a set of flows specialized for transferring the call to an agent. Now performing a direct dial transfer has its own set of problems, which differ from a normal queue routing. Right? With Amazon, you can only take a call if you're in a routable state. Right? So that's great if you're servicing the queue, but if you're doing, like Sai said, back office work, well, you're not in a routable state. But we have a unique business model that says, hey, we, 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 we're built on this one-on-one -on -one relationship between a caller and agent. We want to say, hey, give that caller to reach Steven again or to reach Kristen again. You know? But you know, it's a little bit more complicated than that, right? Because even though I know that Kristen's available, can't she take the call? Is she working today? Is she online? Is she on break? Is she on leave? So there's a bunch of other questions you have to answer before you make the decision to route that call. And obviously, you know, we have a unique requirement of giving the, the agent the ability to answer that call when they're not ready state, or as, you know, in a non-routable state in Amazon Connect nomenclature. So, because, and like, because, like this is because we're not your typical call center, we want to really foster that one-on-one -on -one relationship and to help to facilitate the agents having a long conversation with the client and get that there. So. so once we figured out, answer the questions, you know, is Kristen working, for example? Can she take a call? She's on the call, and we notify it. So once at this point, we send the call to our agent queue treatment, which is a custom flow that we built. And so, as you know, with a, you know, if you're not in a routable state, you won't get the call on your cell phone. It just won't happen, right? It will just push the flow. 
So what we've done was build an agent treatment flow that says, hey, drop this call in that agent's queue, right? They're, they're currently in non-routable as this example. So we need to figure out how to know the agent, Kristen, that there's an incoming call for her. And so we drop them in a queue, we, allow, we do agent queue treatment, we play a, our wonderful Chuck Mangio and hold music for 15 seconds, we then notify the agent through our customized soft phone that there's an incoming call from them, they want to accept it. And then, you know, if they don't accept it or 15 seconds off, we now transfer the call, say we give the option to leave a voicemail or go to another queue. So we don't let that caller sit out there forever, right? We give 15 seconds, which from our experience is a right amount of time to notify the agent via the message, get the notification, present the notification, and return it back to them. Okay. So stepping back a bit, you know, you know, the big question is what is happening on the agent side? We've talked about a lot of what's happening inside Amazon Connect, but what's actually happening on the agent, right? When the, when, so when the call is in the process of being transferred to the agent queue as a result of our Lambda invocation that we talked about earlier, you know, a direct dial request message is published to our SNS topic. That message is then picked up by another Lambda, which is part of our soft phone stack. This Lambda inspects the message to find the target agent and then queries a DynamoDB table that tracks the active web socket from all of our agent soft phones. After finding an active connection, it notifies the API gateway to post a message to that connection. And this is kind of like one of the better slides, I think, that recaps how we're just reaching out to the Amazon AWS ecosystem and, and using other things like, you know, SNS, SQS, API Gateway, Lambdas, we're really just, Amazon Connect allows us to reach into there, do a lot of intensive processing and get back. Because at the end of the day, with a live call, you can't have dead air, right? Everybody knows that's the killer of a call because the customer's like, what's happening? What do I do? You know, should I hang up now? So being able to efficiently get information, set the context and move on and, and have a non-interruptible event for the, for the user on their side. Who cares what we're doing on the back end? For example, one of the things we do is we set a timeout in our Lambda that says, hey, if we don't get a result in a certain time, take a default action and go on, move on. Catch up later, but keep, don't just, you know, don't do dead air. Whatever you can, avoid dead air. So this is what's happening on the agent, agent side, and as, you know, Saeed said, we have our custom soft phone that wouldn't look anything like the CCP. And I would say our custom soft phone was written by our engineers, not a UI specialist, which, you know, you know, so somehow the color palette, I think it's cool, but no one else does. Anyway, so at this point, the target agent software receives a message just like this, and then displays the notification that includes information about the call. Obviously, we've come up stuff, but if you look at this thing, it says, who's the call from, what's their customer name, have they been HIPAA validate, validated, right? It's big for our business, right? So this one says HIPAA no entry, so that we allow people bypass, you know, you're not forced to HIPAA. If you, don't, if you get here, then we do a manual HIPAA. If it says HIPAA in progress, it, you know, it means we've collected three or four pieces of information about our customer, and then our agent just needs to figure out, ask, who am I talking to? And that covers our HIPAA scenarios and gets us there. And the call is likely about, and this says, if we made an any match, well, maybe it's the husband, maybe it's the wife, we don't assume that we know it's exactly that person. So we, we inform the agent, we think it's about Stephen Murphy, but they know they're trained to validate that, right? And that's, you know, and that comes in, into play with our CRM notifications. Obviously, what their default language is and what type of call it is. So this is like direct dial versus an incoming queue call. And like incoming queue calls have the same kind of persona when they come up, but there's like different, different, different information. And then, you know, our accolade business model is, you know, if you're getting a direct dial call, take it because that's someone you have a relationship with and, you know, further that information, that, in, that relationship. So now on to our CRM system. Once the, the agent soft phone successfully answered the call, an event is published to our Connect event adapter, including what the, that the call was answered. The event is propagated through our communications pipeline, pipeline updating the associate communication resource, all that good fire stuff that Kristen talked about, causing the agent CRM to client to update with all the associate call information, and then preemptively pop a client record that we think the call's about, right? So they get the same, you know, consider it, Old-fashioned CTI integration, but, you know, we don't use the term CTI. We just, like, to do other stuff. So, and then, once this allows to do, once the agent actually opens that record, they can now associate the client record. They can also tag the call with this information because 
Maybe it is the identity of the caller is not the person, it is their wife. It is a health plan, a patient, a lead guardian, and this is key to us to actually track every interaction we have a client and tag it to an associated client record. Really very little scenario we don't know by the time the call is answered who it is they're supposed to talk about, right? Because they're, it's a service that, it's not random calls. You get this part of your health plan, so you're in our repository, and then we can research that. And obviously, it lets, allows us to bring about the previous client history, information about them, the medical plan, and probably gives us a nice you know, dashboard to service that client right away, and information we need is right there in our agent's standpoint. Okay, so once the client conversation's ended, the agent will ask, hey, we're all about NPS and we have a very high NPS score. We want everybody to be satisfied and take a survey. So at the end of the call, we say, hey, would you stay on the line to take a survey? And so when the agent, and, and when the agent attempts to hang up the call, either by clicking their headset or hitting the button on the UI, the call goes directly to just cold, cold transfer process. It's a cold transfer process that goes through survey flow. Now, as we talked about, cold transfers are not an out-of-the-box out feature with Amazon Connect but they were very vital to us and one of our highest priority requirements. So to simulate that functionality, we built it ourselves. In addition, we had to make sure that we were able to pass all the contextual information about the call that's happening into the survey call. So at the end of that survey, we were able to easily tie those two calls together. Because as you know, if you have one call to the next, you lose that information, right? So you know, unless you're using a quick transfer, and we didn't have that very custom soft phone. We had to be able to tie those things together. Because we, in theory, with a cold transfer, you're instantiating a new call. Uh, so the custom transfer process looks, works like this. And I'm very proud of these guys for making this happen because the, this transfer process will allow you to do so many different things. I mean, it's not just about sending to survey, sending to voicemail, sending to enhanced queue. You can use this to integrate with another UC provider. So maybe you have a contact center that's on Amazon Connect, but you've got an operation center on some other platform and you want to send a call across, this process will let you do that. And, obviously, and you know, you know, so it's not just about your contact center. This transfer process sets you up for success. Send the call, even if you wanted to send the call to a different provider, one of your partner funds, you can use this process to get that. Because what this process does is it starts with the agent. You know, when, the, when they are hitting the, the transfer button, whether it's by drop down or something else, they are making a lambda call from their soft phone that, that talks to one of our services and says, hey, I've got to transfer this call. The response of that Lambda sends back a unique 10-digit identifier you know, for that call. Then what we do when we actually, in theory, think of it as off-net calling, we off-net to you know, a specialized number that we have, and that, but that off-net exists in our Amazon Connect console. So we off-net to that, and then we use a DT, send DTMF function feature to send those 10 digits. You know, so that next, now, now this new call says, oh, we have a specialized flow that handles that. It says, oh, wow, cool, I got this number. Let me go find out what this is about. So then it makes another lambda and says, hey, tell me everything I need to know about this unique identifier. And so it goes out there and that lambda response brings in, it brings in 1, 10, 50 attributes that contact. So we have clean continuation about that data. And so even if the call went from one agent to another, that agent screen has all that context too, because we've, we've, we pretty much let the call be linear and across the thing. And like I said, that allows us to tie the binds, whether, you know, in our, in our model, you know, one of the unique things we had and one of the struggles why we, we, we did our own cuffs and soft phone is we have one call that could have 10 segments. It's not just in and out, right? We enhance it back and forth and to keep track of all that, but, you know, in theory, that's one engagement. We want to bring it together. When we have to, you know, attribute an ASA to one part of the call and enhance ASA things. And that allows us to daisy chain as many events that we want under one parent phone call and then report on those individually. And, and for our data analytics team, which you talked about, which the biggest struggle that we had was pushing this data, telephony data downstream. It allows us to make that succinct and flow down. And it's one model that's, that integrates with our other ACP services. Okay, so as I talked, I talked about this on the last slide too, it's like, you know, the purpose of the transfer context is to restore context, give you all the information. Obviously, you know, this could happen whether it's an off net, a voicemail box, but in this case it was a survey. You know, it allows us to say, okay, now this survey is associated with this previous phone call, and, but go about your business, right? 
So once it's in the survey flow, and I should say here that survey voicemails, this is all inside Amazon Connect. We're not using any of our providers. We're building this all in our own instance, and it's just another flow in our instance. We're not actually popping out to a third-party survey provider. It's all in our own instance, in our own environment, and so we're not having to send, send data anywhere else. We prompt the caller to answer a few simple questions. Those answers are set as contract attributes, so they can be part of the CTR and then processed downstream. And then, then we ask them, do you want to leave some feedback, you know? How awesome was your agent? Now, if they choose to leave feedback, we use other great processes where we kick, kick out the start media streaming block, which is, we were so excited when Amazon released that. It saved me a lot of development ideas and creative solves. So we kick off that block, and then we store the ARN of that media stream and the, t the start time stamped. And then we finally play a silence for the maximum time we allow. We allow you to leave a three-minute voicemail. And at the end of that, we just net the call. One thing we should note, as they, those engineers are using looking at this, you know, you want to make sure your start media stream block has data. So don't jump right into it. Play an audio prompt. Hey, you'd like to leave a voicemail? Leave it after the beep. Start the media block, then play your beep. That gives you enough time to make sure that your buffer is filled up and your streaming is going. You know, that's some, so just a, a tidbit of information as you learn that. You say, you know, play with this stuff. You find it's, it's awesome, but you, you, you know, play with it. You find out how to get crazy. You don't want to, to miss the first three seconds. Remember their name. Hi, this is Jakob, and you've missed it because the block had, make sure your block has started before you progress on. Uh. Hey, so, Steven. Back here. <laughs> I just want to do a quick time check. OK, sorry. So we make sure we have time for some questions at the end. All right, so I'm really close. Sorry about that. OK, so CTR event processing. So now the call is done. You know, the call's done over. The CTR is produced. We have a lambda that looks at that CTR stream and then spits out the data like, you know, what, what's the recording? What are the stats? You know, when we also invoke then again SNS queues and SNS topics to process this down our pipeline. But this actually wraps up the sample call, and I'm sorry, we're behind, but one thing I want to talk about that's all, as vital to our engineering is real-time monitoring. Uh, Sai talked about that, but we built a whole set of real-time monitoring dashboards that help software operators that is purely off cloud watching some of their own data. And then we were able to systematically put alerts on thresholds, so instead of people pacing, like we have 400 queues, instead of looking at pages and pages of queues, they just get an alert. This queue's on fire. This handle time is too high. Take action. And so that, and just be able to use CloudWatch data and some of our own data, we're able to produce this. Uh, so as we're wrapping up here. So success factors, I mean, they're, they're pretty simple for executive support, support of people like Harish and Raj to actually use a contract center disruptor and go with a non-name, you know, not one of the top holistic, you know, existing people was massive. Having a DevOps partnership and software automation in your organization, because for us, we were doing some new stuff in AWS. It wasn't new to AWS, but it was new to us. And having a tight partnership that allowed us to conform to our cloud standards was huge. Uh, change the status quo. Just don't do it the way you used to do it in your previous provider. Don't repeat the mistakes you made. Think about it. Think about your personas, your running profiles, and make it work for Amazon Connect. And also, a great, have a great cadence with your AWS support team and your reps, your accounts. You know, having, they're willing to help you. Bounce ideas. We bounce a lot of ideas for creative solves and got what we want in a short period of time. Just utilize them. They're there, and they're, I mean, Sai was fantastic. Raj, the guys they brought in, you know, Tim not so much, the sales guy, but everybody else is great. Um, so what's next for us? So we rolled out callbacks, but it was agent first. And our business, unfortunately, we're not too happy. So we're going to flip that model on that and make it client first because, you know, if you're, Callbacks are great if the client's there to answer the call, but if don't, you get their voicemail. What do you do? Did you leave a voicemail? Do you interact? So we're going to flip the model to client first, and then on top of that is to build a predictive algorithm to know when to make that call back. And so there's no, has close to no wait time for the client. So we're actually going to build our own predictive algorithm based on queue wait time, positioning queue, to honor that positioning queue. Obviously, we already have scheduled callbacks. That's easy, but kind of taking the scheduled callback model and making it queue-based. Creating a dynamic queue treatment feature. Uh, we already did that. That's just to extend the dynamic nature. So we offer dynamic queue treatment based on customer line of business. Enhanced routing, that's bringing omni-channel routing, enhanced routing and skilling. So if there is a busy period, our goal is to have a, a small customer wait experience. Give them options. That set business rules that can send a call 
wherever we need to be the call, reach out, get more agents, instead of having to continually manipulate routing profiles. We don't want our workforce management team to touch routing profiles. We're gonna do it all systematically. And then, last thing, building out quality metrics, Connect Lens was a lifesaver for me. We had planned nine months of development to do this the week I got the call from Amazon to say, hey, let me, let me show us your product. I could have hugged the guy, you know, but it's safe, and so, and this is, you know, our business has been screaming for this, and they're gonna get it at the start of the year. Um, that's all I've got, thanks. Ready for Q&A? Sorry I took, sorry took way too much time, and Chris did I, I was supposed to get the whole hour, but they just took time, I don't know what that was about. But anybody have any questions before we wrap up? Yes. The screen recording or is call recording? Screen record. Um, we don't do screen, screen recording, right? So we have, we, have, we have the phone recording and our CRM center comes to everything, so it's already captured. We don't actually record it. Uh, anything else? Yes. Um, Murphy, can you repeat the question? So he, wants, he was trying to figure, how do we how, do knowledge-based implementation and get the right answer to the agent? Um, we don't lose Elasticsearch for that. We have our own custom CRM tool that assists with that. So we have of our cloud platform, a lot of the services that, that make our CRM tool. You know, we build our own custom CRM because nobody fit or needed, and we're kind of unique that way. And so that native intelligence is built into that CRM tool. I mean, going forward, once we get contact lens and fully in, and send some set of analysis. We use the same analysis more for our AI learning, and then we're gonna bring that forward, right? We're, we're still in the process of training our AI learning models to, bring, to pre present that forward to be, you know, to give some more predictive analysis to the agent. What should they do next? What should they do next? But we are, we're, we're, we're I would say, a non-scripted company. We're, we really, our conversation can be anything. Now, we use the knowledge base, but we don't script any responses, if that makes sense. Anything else? Yes. So, so how do we route the calls when in our unroutable state? Oh, poking. Yeah. Poking. poking. Okay. okay. So yes. Yeah. So that is through the web. We know the active WebSocket connection of every one of our agents, and so we pre and through I don't know an SNS event. I think it is. Yeah. We we notify their desktop and pop the model. So like the screen I had that had notification bar. That's the poking mechanism. We don't do it, we, we know they're logged off, so we have different actions, that's where they get the voicemail. So if they're logged off, nothing we can do, but if they are logged on, we wanna reach them. Anything else? What do you think about Internal extension dialing? Um, yeah, so we, have, we built a mechanism in one of our dry machine interventions that we say, hey, here's a list of all the active agents. We, we have a custom soft phone that drops down a list of every active agent, they just pick it, they can go to the voicemail and they can find them, and then through WebSocket activation, SNSQ. And we're just, so we have a reasonable agent. Yeah. The, the, we've got one six digit and associated with, we were on sort of another service that says, we've got this digit, what's the email address so we can send it to the right agent? There you go. So what, what he's saying is that we have an internal reference to every agent. So once you pick the reference, we, we instantiate from the soft phone, go find the login ID of the, of the agent, and then deliver that call to them, just like we do and not the direct agent dialing. So we use our external direct agent dialing mechanism for internal dialing agent mechanism. Yeah, so in, in that particular case, there's a dynamic DB, no SQL table with the key value pairs where the key becomes the extension numbers and the subsequent data like the agent login and agent ID is all associated with it. Uh, so when the, you get the extension, you do a lookup in that no SQL database and then you can route that call to that particular agent. Uh, there's a blog about it on AWS Amazon Connect blog page in case you're interested in how to do extension dialing on Amazon. I, I love this because it gets us out of the business of assigning extensions, which we had to do on our previous platform. Now that can be someone else's job, figuring out what new hire gets for their four-digit extension. And you're not paying for those key ideas? No, right. no, exactly. Did you make the dashboards on your own? The real-time dashboards that we showed? Uh, we have a creative, real-time genius named Drew Garner, right? right? There. <laughs> he built them from scratch. He is like a 
new relic, cloud watch guru. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what he doesn't sleep. He just whips all this stuff out. It's fantastic. But yeah, they're all they're all they're all I mean, handmade. We, we started with the out of the box stuff, but pretty pretty quickly evolved into building something that was more appropriate for what we needed. I think we got one more question, maybe. Uh, we have a 911 service, E911, and um, that's how we support that. We have, we have a, a, an additive product? No, it's no. an external product, yeah. and the agent logs in and basically indicates the address or at least the city or zip of the person who they need to get 911 support for. That gives then them a 10-digit phone number we that we call. That's a tough place to be, E911 and, and liability around that, yes? Oh, yeah. Sure, you know what? We've got to wrap up, but if you want to come up and talk, we can talk. We'll spend as much time as you want outside. So, oh, and or out there. To share well, that, so we're right. getting kicked out. We're getting kicked out. All right, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. I like it.